So, fun story. Before I got into this filmmaking thing, I actually did a lot of photography professionally. And over time, as my skills got better, the still pictures ended up becoming moving pictures, and you started creating more short films and commercials, and at some point, photography started to slip away. But now that there's so many tools available to create great images, I find that things are a little bit easier, and maybe I actually want to go back, especially with this. Now this video is going to be sponsored by Luminar Neo, and today we're actually going to relive the glory days by editing some of the old fitness photos that I did before I got into cinematography. Now we are going to have three photos and we're going to go through all the AI tools that are in this program, but let's just get started. All right, so we're going to go with this middle photo first to actually edit this guy up. Now we're going to see how we could actually use some of the AI tools that are going to be inside of Luminar Neo. Now we do have our first photo open. We're just gonna go over to the edit tab over here and there's gonna be a bunch of different tools that you can use. Now I'm gonna go over to develop because that's kind of like the editing controls that you would see on like a Lightroom or any other photo editing app and add a couple of different adjustments just to get it in the ballpark of where I actually want it to be. So easy thing I'm gonna do here is that we have your shadows which I wanna bring up and I'm gonna bring my highlights down. Now Luminar does have something called Smart Contrast where it does use the AI program to actually have your contrast in a way that isn't overbearing but at the same time makes a lot of sense for the image that you're going to be using. Now as I'm doing this I'm just making sure that I have enough details in my darker areas, bring down my sky so it's not blown out, uh, and that looks actually pretty decent. Now this image overall looks a little bit on the cool side so I am just going to warm this up which you can easily do just by going to the color tab over here, going to my temperature and raising that up a little bit. Now that our image is ready to start getting a bunch of adjustments, we're gonna go in and actually do a sky replacement. Now, now Luminar does have sky AI, which I could just click over here and I can actually select the different types of skies that I want. Now, if you do wanna buy some extra ones, that's a completely different conversation. We'll talk about that later. However, I wanna go for more of a golden hour look. So I'm gonna go with this one and see what comes up. Now, right off the bat, that might look slightly unnatural. There's going to be some lines that are obvious in our subject. The sky's a little bit different of a color from the rest of our image. So we're going to make a couple of adjustments to make this look as believable as possible. Now, what we're going to do here is I'm actually going to scroll down close to the bottom and I'm going to go to my sky adjustments. I did shoot in a more shallow depth of field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to defocus the sky that I replaced to make it look like it was the same depth of field as when I started with. All I have to do is defocus. I'm going to put that up a little bit and now that at least looks a little bit more natural however if you check over here you'll notice that some of the details that are on here as well uh, they're a little bit weird they don't look necessarily like the sky was there because you wouldn't get that fringing around uh, if you took this normally so I actually have to go up to here and go to my mask refinement now mask refinement I could do globally and you start to see as I turn that up it starts to get rid of some of those lines now, I also want to try to close the gaps a little bit just to make sure that the white lines that are around certain areas aren't super pronounced and it doesn't give it away. And then what I'm going to do is go to my fixed details. And as I do that, it'll start to fix some of the fine details that are in the defocus areas of the image. Now, when it's super close up like this, you still might notice it. It still might give it away a little bit. But uh, we can start to make those adjustments a little bit later. But this actually looks pretty decent outside of that little light post that might give away the trick. Now, the sky is going to be a different color. And also, the cloud looks a little bit big. But what we actually could do is we could move the orientation of the sky we replaced to make sure that it fits and feels a little bit better. So I'm going to go over here. And you actually have a horizon position. So I can change how close or how far away the sky is. I think I'm going to go right about here because it does just touch the horizon. It makes it look like it makes sense. And then my vertical position of the sky, I'm just going to move up and down to see where it fits. I really do like the vertical position, but this cloud in the background, it's uh, it's really dark. It doesn't necessarily look like it makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I scroll this down a little bit, if I can get something a little bit better. Gonna change my vertical position one more time just to get it lower in there. Uh, oh, that's a little bit better. Now, what I do want to do is I actually want to change the color of the sky itself. Now, this is still a very golden hour type of look. However, the clouds, however, the clouds are a little bit on the purple side. So I'm gonna go here, back down to those sky adjustments, and I'm just gonna take that warmth. I'm gonna pump it up a little bit. 
Also, I'm going to try Atmosphere Case. I've actually never tried this, but I'm going to give that a shot. Put it over there, and then I'm just going to turn my brightness up a little bit over there. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a sun in here as well. Because it's a more golden hour look, I want to make sure that I kind of sell it by putting a little bit of sun in there. But there is a couple of ways that you got to do this guy. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here. I'm just going to close down my sky AI. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and I'm going to go over into sun rays. Now, you could place sun in the center. However, you might notice that this doesn't make a lot of sense when I start to add this up. That looks weird and it looks super unnatural because that's not actually where the sun is coming from. It's actually going to be lower on the image right about down here. So I'm going to move this down over here. Now, that still doesn't look like it makes a ton of sense. You have to tone this down quite a bit and make sure that it kind of layers into the overall image. So I'm going to take its look. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. The rays length, I'm going to bring that down just a touch so it's not overbearing. And uh, the penetration for it, because it's how it penetrates through the clouds, I'm going to bring that down too. And uh, just make a couple of fine adjustments on it here. Now, what I'm going to also do is I'm going to get the sun to be a lot warmer to match the bottom of my image. And also, you could actually adjust the radius and how round or how big the sun actually is. I'm going to pull that down a little bit. I'm going to pull the glow radius up. I'm going to pull the glow amount up, but also the rays are a little bit overbearing as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take down the number of rays that are there, randomize them a little bit, and then I'm going to go over to my masking tool. That way I could actually determine how much of that sun's going to be in there because typically the sun wouldn't be on the other side of the fences. So I'm going to just put on a little gradient mask and then I'm going to put it upside down. So that way it tapers off by the fence. So it looks like it was there to begin with. Now all I'm gonna do is make a couple of really small adjustments and then we're gonna to get to our final image. Now the next tool we're going to use is going to be Portrait AI and actually changing the shape of well people. Now I don't necessarily recommend doing this fairly often. Some people might like to use it, some people might not. It's not something that I do particularly in my photos, but I do like the fact that AI has the ability to actually make these adjustments and they make it really, really easy. But we'll just get in the program and talk about it. Now what we're going to do here is we do have our image in here. Uh, first I'm going to go to my crop AI because oftentimes I don't necessarily have a good level when I take photos. So I'm going to go to my horizontal alignment press apply, AI takes care of it and it already gets it done. Now I'm just gonna go over into my develop and just do a couple minor adjustments and then we'll get back into portrait AI. Okay, so now we are back into an image that actually looks pretty decent right out of camera. Uh, I might have to make a couple of adjustments if I really, really want to, but this is actually going to be pretty decent. And for most companies where they want clean images, this is how it would look. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over into Portrait AI. Now, with this, again, be careful with this. Don't really use this frivolously. Don't be ridiculous with it. However, uh, this is going to be interesting because if I go to Body AI, I could change Maya, who's incredibly in shape, and I could, and I can go from a normal person to She-Hulk on Disney Plus, or I can go the other way and Christian Bale from that movie where he lost a ton of weight but also has one gigantic arm. So you can change these things while using the shape on the body adjustments. Now, what's also really cool is you can go over to the skin tab, which I do like a lot. So if you do have images that are a little bit too shiny, you could actually go into the shine removal tool, and you can remove some of those things there. You could also adjust the skin using Skin AI, which is going to be here as well. Now, to be completely honest, it's actually pretty clean. Like, the skin looks pretty decent. So, there isn't a lot of blemishes and things that I have to fix. But there are a couple other things that you can do in here. Now, you could also go into Face AI as well. And not necessarily just changing people's faces and their eyes and stuff. But one thing that I like doing, especially if you have some smaller lights and cheaper lights, is you could actually add more light to somebody's face. So I could actually pump this up just a little bit. And that's before. And let's pump that up. And that is after. So that way it looks like the key light's actually hitting on the face. And not necessarily kind of fading out like it would on the rest of the image. 
Now, I'm actually a big fan of using things like hazers and diffusion filters and adding more atmosphere into my image. So we're actually going to use that on Luminar as well. So we're going to get out of our portrait AI because I find that tool scary and dangerous. We're going to go to atmosphere AI and you could add a choice of either fog, layered fog, mist or haze into your image. And you could add the amounts to make it look a little bit more atmospheric or hazy or whatever that look is if it had a singular name. Now I'm going to go over to haze and then I could actually determine my amount. And that actually looks pretty good. Now you could actually change the depth of how far forward or how far back it is. So this is going to make it look like it's right inside of the frame. This is obviously going to make it look like it's farther back and just finding a little bit of a happy medium between the two makes a lot of sense. I'm also going to change my lightness or my brightness around just to make sure it's not overbearing. But I also think this is a little bit too front forward. So I'm going to put this over here. Now you could always mask this as well. If you want to do a linear gradient, maybe come from here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change that mask. Linear gradient. I'm actually going to have that mask coming up from here. And then pump the amount of haze up a little bit. Change my depth. Bring my lightness up. And that's essentially what my image is going to look like. Now, for you guys that might have noticed, you don't necessarily have access to everything on Luminar AI as you would on something like Lightroom. However, Luminar actually has the ability for you to pour into Lightroom if you want to put your special sauce like your presets on there. And in fact, I also have presets as well. So we're going to actually move this over into Lightroom and we could do some more adjustments in there. Now, all you have to do is go to File, Open In, and you can go to Photoshop or you can go into Lightroom, click on Lightroom, It'll prep the image and you'll be able to do that and make those final adjustments. Now I'm going to add one of the presets from my pack, which honestly has nothing to do with this video. And we're going to see what our final image looks like. Now, for you guys that are Sony FX3 and FX30 users, you actually might be pretty happy here. Now, a big complaint I've had, especially with people on the FX3, is the idea that you don't necessarily get the most megapixels out of the photos that you can get. Now, Luminar also adds something called Luminar Upscale AI. And that way, I could take photos that I took on cinema cameras, which might not be the best for taking photography photos anyways, and I could add that into the program in order for me to upscale the resolution so I could actually have a lot more to work with and I can make those adjustments and still keep everything very sharp. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this photo which I took on the FX30. I'm going to drag that down into upscale AI for real because I missed it. Scroll down a little bit and you could change to actually double, quadruple, or I guess sex topple, weird word, but you could decide which one you want to do. Press upscale and then it'll do its thing and it's going to be prepped and ready for you to edit later on. Now we're going to get into the edit and I'm just going to use the develop tab to add some more exposure into my image because right now it's a little bit dark. I'm going to go up to here. Just add a little bit more exposure on there. I do really like using the smart contrast. I don't really know what the difference between regular contrast and smart contrast is, but this one works a lot better and doesn't look overbearing, which I guess is smart. Now I'm going to bring my highlights down and then just do the normal highlights down, shadows up, a little bit of contrast, a little bit of exposure. This image looks pretty decent out of the gate. And then I'm also going to add in some warmth to it because that's just the way that I like to work with some of these images. I'm going to bring some of my saturation down, but I'm going to bring my vibrance up just to get a more bronze look. And uh, those are going to be my basic adjustments. Now, on the topic of sharpness and actually having crispy photos, you could actually use something called Super Sharp on Luminar as well. So I'm going to go over to the Super Sharp app. I'm going to go over to here and you can either choose Universal or Motion Blur. Now, I'm going to choose Universal because there isn't a lot of Motion Blur in here. And then I'm just going to check the low. Now, what it's done is it's actually added some AI sharpening into the image to make it just look a little bit more crispy. Now, if I do this on, say, like a middle, for example, it's going to look a little bit overbearing, unnatural and a bit too sharp, especially when only dealing with an image that was taken off a 26 megapixel crop camera. However, if I just go on the low end, this is subtle enough that the image still looks like it's high resolution, where at the same time, it doesn't create too much chaos. Now, you can use the face enhancer AI as well. And I'll be honest, I'm not crazy about this face enhancer, so I think I'm going to turn this off. 
and I'm just gonna go back to what it normally looks like. However, this is a really quick edit on something like a Sony FX30 or an FX3 that you can do. You could upscale the resolution to get a little bit more megapixels out of it that you guys might've been missing when going with that camera. However, this image looks pretty good and I would post this on Instagram. This could be a great photo for a client. And at the same time, you still get to keep the high quality video features that you would have out of one of the cinema line cameras. That being said, I didn't want to drag out this video for too long, but that is a quick rundown of using Luminar Neo. Now, there's a bunch of different features that you can use that I didn't cover in this video, and I really hope you guys do try it out. Now, there is going to be a discount code if you guys want to check this out today, and I'm going to leave that down in the description down below. But special shout out to Luminar for actually sponsoring this video, and uh, give this a try. And if you actually do end up posting some photos on like Instagram or something, you can tag me, and I'll leave my Instagram in the description as well. But that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.